Hello everyone, this is chapter 12, part A. In this part, we'll talk about implementing the profit maximizing output and pricing decisions. Okay, so we will talk about the general rules for implementation. So again, should the firm produce or shut down? Produce means stay in the short run, shut down means exit in the short run. And if production occurs, how much should the firm produce? So what's the optimal level of quantity Q star looks like a star that maximizes your profits. You don't want to produce just any level of output, but you want to produce the level of output that maximizes your profits. So here are the steps. Step number one, estimate the demand equation. Okay, so we'll use statistical techniques from chapter seven. We'll be given these demand equations. Substitute forecast of demand shifting variables into the estimated demand equation to get something like this. Okay, so Q quantity sold A prime plus BP. P is the own price, price of the product, right? A prime includes some other things. It has intercept A constant c m head m is the income in the area so this is the average income of the people in the area it could be median income too if you remember from chapter 7 pr is the price of related good d is the parameter estimate so what's going to happen is that we're trying to estimate this right a plus bp plus c m head plus d pr Actually, we'll be given this PR, D, estimate of D, M, he M hat, C, and we'll be given B and A, right? Then you generate A prime, which is just these parts, okay? And then this is going to be like a constant number once we plug in all values, and B is a given number too. So we're trying to estimate this equation. Second step is to find inverse demand equation. So demand equation looks something like this, okay? So it is Q equals, right, A prime plus B P price. Inverse demand equation, it, you know, demand curve is downward sloping quantities here, prices here. So Y in Y axis, I have price. In X axis, I have quantity. Therefore, if you want this equation to be M plus NX, right, you want this equation to look like price equals something. So I want to leave price by itself. So quantity minus A prime equals BP. Okay, divide everything by B. Divided by B. So it's going to look like, I'm just going to put this on this side, price equals, right? Q1 over BQ minus A prime B, okay? So this is your, this is your um, inverse demand equation, okay? So hold on, I'm going to erase everything. So this is what you're doing, solve for P. So this is what it, it's going to look like. All right, so what you're going to do, we're going to rename A prime over B as capital A and 1 over b as b okay these are going to be some numbers and then next we're going to actually um so again a prime is this we calculated capital a capital b we're just making it uh, making things look a little bit more manageable so then you have a demand function looking like this demand price equals a plus b q okay quantity price here that's it okay so then second stage is solve for marginal revenue so to solve for marginal revenue remember demand function is like this price quantity marginal revenue looks like this and actually here's the general rule so if you have um p equals a BQ, if this is your demand function, right? Marginal revenue, here's a shortcut for you, shares the same intercept, same constant, plus twice the intercept, oh, sorry, twice the slope, okay? Twice, and this B is a negative number, so 
it's going to be steeper twice the slope. So this is just a real quick shortcut for you all. Okay. So if, if, if merge demand function looks like this, marginal revenue shares the same intercept slope is twice as big. Okay. So if you write it in terms of a hat, a lowercase a, hat, a prime and B, sorry. Uh, it looks like this negative a prime over b plus 2 over b instead of 1 over b q okay so next step will be estimate average variable cost and marginal cost and how do we do this we'll be actually using chapter 10 techniques so average variable cost is remember is a formula so this is this these a b and c's are different these are the parameters of the cost function so it's a cost b cost um, q plus c cost q square and if you look at the total variable cost this is going to look like a cost q plus b cost q raised to the power two plus c cost q raised to the power three so this is total variable cost and so, uh, and your short run marginal cost is going to be the first derivative of total variable cost. Just a reminder, first derivative of total variable cost with respect to quantity. So A cost quantity, A cost, right? B cost Q raised to the power two, second power comes up from two B cost times quantity, power goes two minus one, one. And the last one, C cost, this third power comes up front, 3, C cost, Q, power 3 minus 1 is going to go down to 2, okay? So then we're going to estimate those, and then we're going to find the optimal level of output such that marginal revenue is equal to short term marginal cost, and we're going to solve it for Q star. We are going to grab the larger of the two solutions and the formula is quite, you know, it's going to look quite complicated. However, we are going to do everything in Excel and you, you're going to see everything is super, super, super easy. Okay. And then we're going to, once we find the quantity, so what did we do? Okay. I'm just going to give you a quick review of what we're doing. The meant curve, we estimated that marginal revenue. Then we have marginal cost. So you got marginal cost, marginal revenue. We found Q stars. Then you go hit the demand curve. That's uh, start from here. Go hit the demand curve. That's the price, profit maximizing price, right? Then what we have is, okay, average variable cost. You got average total cost, okay? So next step is going to be Am I going to stay? So this is the price I'm going to charge, quantity I'm going to produce, but am I staying? Start from quantity, go hit the average variable cost curve, which is here. That's my average variable cost. Price is greater than or equal to average variable cost. We're going to stay in the short run. And then last step, step is going to be profit, which is going to be quantity, price minus average total cost. We talked about this in previous parts. So I got the price here, quantity here. I need average total cost. Start here, go hit the average total cost curve right here. I hit it here from this quantity, so ATC. So the price per, uh, sorry, profit per unit is going to be price minus average total cost. Right, this is price, average total cost, times quantity. So your profit is going to be this area. And that's exactly what we're doing, but by calculating this um, instead of graphically. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. All right, so let's let's just catch up with where we were at. Okay. All right, so find profit maximizing price. So substitute Q into the inverse demand function. So I had this A plus B Q. We're going to substitute this here. If you remember, right, A plus B Q, B Q, right? And then Q star and P star are on, 
are only optimal if price is greater than or equal to average variable cost. This is you. This is the condition for you to be able to stay. Check the shutdown rule, right? So substitute Q star into average variable cost function. So these are already given. So you just plug in your Q star, right? And what you'll see is if price is greater than or equal to average variable cost, produce Q star units of output and sell at the price of P star. If price doesn't cover your average variable cost you can't even pay for your workers or your electricity you need to shut down in the short run and your profits will be your negative total fixed cost so whatever fixed cost you have will be your um, negative of that will be your profits it's going to be loss okay next step last step is compute profit or loss profit is total revenue minus total cost and total revenue is price times quantity minus so this is the second item is your total variable cost which is average variable cost times quantity minus total fixed cost will be given this number okay so you can put it in q star parenthesis price minus average variable cost minus um, the whole thing minus total fixed cost Again, if price is less than average variable cost, you have to shut down. Then the profit is negative of total fixed cost. We talked about this. All right, I'll see you next part. With the next part, we are actually going to be practicing this in Excel.